Ever since I started this website, which was in September, <clears throat> there's been a big story that I haven't told yet, and it's sort of bothering me. And the longer I leave it, the bigger it gets. But it has lots of different layers. It's about the Delaware River, obviously, but the upper Delaware, um, where people fish and uh, there's a lot of boating and kayaking, and where that activity is really crucial to the local economies. The New York City reservoirs, Cannonsville and Pipacton, are in the east and west branches of the Delaware, and it's below those reservoirs where the fishing is really good. The water's always been cold in those branches because the water's coming right out of the Catskills. <clears throat> it's cold now, too, because the water that comes out of the reservoir is cold. The water that comes out of those reservoirs has to meet a certain guidelines that was set ages ago in a Supreme Court decision that sort of settled some water disputes between the four states or among the four states that border the Delaware, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Meeting those flow guidelines means that most of the time there's good water for good fishing. Um, people like Trout Unlimited are uh, big enthusiasts for the fishing that's on these branches. What happens though sometimes is that there's not quite enough cold water to make the fishing sort of established, permanent, um, and so the people in those communities both the people who fish and the people who will recognize its economic benefits, have been trying to figure out a way to increase the amount of cold water that comes out of those reservoirs. New York City rules, governs those reservoirs. Those reservoirs are in existence to supply New York City's water. So the people in these towns in the upper Delaware took their case to the Delaware River Basin Commission, which is the four state and one member of the federal government, um, that looks after the river and who uses what water from the river. Despite having spoken to different sorts of commissions and subcommittees of the DRBC, those folks have, I think it's fair to say, feel like their requests for more water has fallen on deaf ears. The DRBC has not said yes, no, or maybe. The DRBC could be thinking about it. All of their deliberations are behind closed doors. So what happened earlier this summer, or earlier this year, or earlier last year, in July anyway, there was a leak in the Cannonsville Reservoir. It was not actually a leak in the reservoir. It was a couple of feet downstream from the reservoir. But the folks at New York City Water were like justifiably concerned about this. They told everybody about it. They uh, developed uh, or presented inundation maps that would, you know, uh, get, be some sort of guide to what would happen if the dam actually, you know, failed, which is just, just horrific. It turns out it wasn't a dam failure. There was no big, you know, there was no big cause for alarm. It was uh, appropriate caution. But <clears throat> while they were trying to figure out what the problem was, New York City started releasing more water from the dam, Cannonsville Dam, than they would ordinarily. But even as they were releasing more water than they usually do, they were also reassuring everybody, obviously mostly the pe pe people in New York City, that they would still have enough drinking water. There was no danger, even though they're emptying out this reservoir pretty fast. I mean, obviously they're, you know, being safe. They're not sort of just, you know, letting all sorts of water run down the river, but they're, they're letting a lot more go than they usually do. Turns out, of course, the the poor, the borehole problem was fixed. Uh, the dam is perfectly fine. Uh, the water folks in the city are looking after it. It's great. Well, those folks that were pleading for more water put two and two together because they're smart people. And they say, if you could let that much go, water go out of the Cannonsville Reservoir and still have enough water for New York City, that means you could increase the amount of water from the reservoir to meet this very small request we have for more water on a more constant basis so we can build this, you know, the, the fishing into even a stronger economic driver. 
Then in October, Governor Cuomo, he actually took sort of like a bicycle tour in the Catskills. Um, <clears throat> at least he kept his shirt on, um, unlike Mr. Putin does. But anyway, um, <clears throat> he announced this $5 million uh, tourism push to promote tourism in the very area we're talking about, mostly Sullivan, to some degree, Delaware County as well. Yay, that's great because, you know, more tourism means that these communities that don't have much industry and stuff like that might see some benefits. But hang on, hold on. There's New York City who's saying, no more water for you, and the governor who's saying, ooh, this is a great place to go for fly fishing. Meanwhile, the people who are needing more water or wanting more water are beating at the gates of the DRBC saying, help us get more water, where it sort of occurs to me that, like, New York City could listen to those people, certainly, but also to Governor Cuomo, who's saying that he wants to promote fly fishing. So you see my problem in a sense that, like, well, it's not really a problem. What it is is a perfect illustration of how interconnected all the parts are of the Delaware River and that the domino effect of one thing that leads to another thing that leads to another thing is part of the essential nature of the story of the Delaware. Anyway, so I think I've sort of figured it out what I need to say. I'll write the story and you can let me know what you think because, you know, your opinion's worth something, right? Okay, bye.